Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I'm joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, how was it beating up on T-Ballers this weekend? Wow. They're the number 23 team in the country. I, I would hold off on that. Uh... Before we played them, they were the 23rd team in the country. So you after, you, after you played them, would you consider them the number 23 team in the nation? I haven't seen the other 22 teams in the country. <laughs> there's the answer for you. That is it. There are what, 200, there's 180 plus uh, NAI teams. And yep. let you know that uh, there are quite a few ahead of that team that you guys played. So No, there's really not many teams that we've played that are ahead of them, sadly. That's fair. That's fair. It might be one of the best teams you guys play. Wait until you play Westmont. Wait until you play Hope. Um, and then, you, uh, then, then you'll understand. If we, if we take three or four from Hope, you're, you're going to stop this talking real quick. I will never, ever not. I'll, ne- I'll never, ever not shit talk Vanguard. I'll let you know that right now. Like, until until we, we, if we, if we win the conference, you will, you will stop. No, I, I'll still continue it. I'll still continue it. All right, man. So, guys, welcome. What's up? How's everybody doing today? This is fantastic. I'm excited to talk some Angels baseball uh, with Nate today. So, Nate, as you know, and as everybody knows, I like to start this podcast off the question, asked it on Twitter, got to ask it here as well so how many different players will play shortstop this year for the angels the over under seven and a half over under seven and a half at shortstop yes. Jesus. Yes. let's go through it let's go through it here david fletcher yep Luis renifo yes uh tyler wade yes anthony rendon just kidding no. um matt you, duffy. Never, you never know matt duffy matt duffy velasquez uh, Velasquez, who we just had a nice conversation about there, off the record. That's, the record. that's five right there without even like going really into this. Um, I think I, this is me. I think they make a trade at some point, so that will be one of the two that we are missing. And then the seventh guy. Brendan Davis. Brendan Davis is possible. I don't – he hasn't played yet, so – that's crazy to me. Um, said Matt oh, Duffy. Jack! Jack! Jack plays a game at shortstop. Yeah, Jack Mayfield will play for sure at shortstop. We see David Fletcher. I'm just that's, going through. The, I'm that's going through the seven, game. right? There. That's six with a. Uh, Rojas won't. Um, we he played. He time. played shortstop at my junior college. That's the difference between junior college and the pro level. Um, yeah. So the over under right now, I give you oh, let's, let's say over under six, six and a half. Six and a half. Six so and a half. Seven, that's fine. Yeah. I take the over. I take the over too. I think that they find a way. I think. I mean, you look at the past, and if history repeats itself, there's going to be some injuries, um, and there's going to be some players that struggle. So they're going to pick somebody up uh, DFA wise, correct? That can probably play shortstop to some degree. Yeah, that couldn't hit his way of a wet paper bag somewhere else. Correct. Um, who's playing? Then, who's starting shortstop in Baltimore right now? Uh, Jorge Mateo, uh, once he, top, once great top prospect, uh, San Diego, Oakland. Yes. Yep. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense there. I am. Um, I'm with you there. I, I six and a half. Um, six and a half, and I take the over. I take the over as well. Unfortunately. Wow. I do. It's not a good start. No, it is not. But uh, today we're going to talk some shortstops. I just figured we'd we'd start it here. But first, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for listening to this podcast here at Talking Halos again, making us the best Angels podcast out there. Um, you know, kicking us up in the rankings too. I keep an eye on those uh, those weird rankings that they come out with, and we did pretty good last week. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun talking with John on Friday about all these signings. Yep. Uh, Nate, I missed you. Uh, I saw it. I, I saw John was the analytic guy. It was fantastic. Yes, yes, it was fantastic. Shout out to John for a great, great job with the analytics on Friday. He, did. he brought all the stats that we needed um, in, in the podcast. It was, it was fantastic. You, you almost lost your job there. I'm going to let you know. You almost lost I know. I know. So, again, if you could follow us on any of our social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, that would be absolutely fantastic. Leave us a review. Um, we're trying to work on turning on comments. If anybody knows how to turn on comments on YouTube, this is going to be really weird. I don't know how to do that. Right? I don't know on YouTube enough. Right? I do marketing on Facebook. I don't do marketing on YouTube yet. Um, so if anybody knows how to do turn on the, turn on um, comments, let me know because uh, you'd be a lifesaver so people can comment on this stuff. 
Um, again, subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it or watching us. Hello, YouTube. Uh, you can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim's. You can follow Nate at Nate Green 34. Nate, let's get it going here. Let's get it rolling here. Start the short stop conversation. We're going to – let's start spring training talk right now. Huh? Have you seen – have you watched any? I've watched three innings, I, by the way. I have watched a little bit. I was in Arizona this weekend. Almost made it to a game, okay. but I did not. Um, I had some friends who made it to a game, though. They were there for the Oakland game. So, that was fun. Um, I saw the Joe Adele home run. That was fantastic. That's good to see. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest question marks that we want to see answered in spring training. Is Joe Adele going to hit? And the swing and miss stuff, like, yeah, it's probably going to be there. But, like, can he hit enough where he's not, you know, 230 average with 25 home runs and, you know, 200, 200 plus strikeouts or something like that? So that's kind of a good sign to see him go, go yard early, uh, especially since typically – the hitters are always behind the pitchers. So yeah. to see him go yard in his, you know, first game, first couple of bats, it was, it was big time for Joe Adele for his confidence and for just the fact that we, we want, we want questions answered and that's going to be one of them. Absolutely. I mean, a good year for Joe Adele this year and, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? This is, this is a good year for Joe Adele. He's going to strike out a lot. We already know that, but if he can kick the strikeout percentage down to 25%, 22%. 25 percent 20 23 to 25%. If he can kick it down to that and hit him and hit 25 home runs and play average defense and, and let's say he's batting let's see 250 260 with uh 3 260 with a 340 330 WR or not WRC plus but a 3 uh, 30 on base percentage let's say like a 125 to 130 WRC plus that's a that's a good year for Joe Adele. And I think we're going to need him to steal some bases as well. He's going to need to steal 15 to 20 bags as well, just because he's probably going to hit six, seventh in the order. And the way the bottom of the order looks right now, um, it looks like an NAI lineup. One through <laughs> six is pretty good. Seven, eight, nine. Uh, you just pitch to him. And, you know, if they beat you, that guy probably shouldn't be in the game anymore. So yeah. that's basically how, how the Angels lineup looks. Yeah, I think once you get lower in the lineup, for sure, you got to you definitely got to think about stealing some bases. I think they brought bunting, on bunting. Please lay bunt, down a bunt. Bunting, yes. Uh, old school baseball, like we mentioned, I mean, we've talked about this a lot with with Joe Madden. I forgot who we brought it up with. Uh, John, was it you? Me and John have talked about this before. Yeah, I know John. I thought we had a guest that came on. We were talking about Sam with Sam Blum a little bit about like the yeah. combination, like the Joe or Joe Madden being a little. Was it Jeff? A little bit. I don't, I don't know who it was. I think it might have been Jeff. Jeff who? We haven't had a Jeff on. No. I don't know. We haven't had Jeff Fletcher on. No. Soon. soon. Yeah, soon. It's not yet. But um, but yeah, I, I think once Jim? you get down there in the lineup, I think we were talking Jim. about Sam. I think we were talking about with Sam. Okay. okay. I think we were talking about with Sam. But um, but yeah, once you get lower in the lineup, it would be great to see a little bit of old school baseball. You can do all you you can do whatever you want one through one through five, I'd say. You know, like it's gonna be in some order, Trout, Otani, Rendon, Walsh, and up. Marsh. Marsh, in a sense. Marsh um, is probably leading off for the first couple of weeks. And if he hits, he stays there. If he doesn't, he moves down. Upton's probably that, or not Upton. Um, Upton, Walsh is probably that five range. Yeah. And then I think Adele's sixth. I think that's kind of where Joe Adele will hit the whole year sixth. Then you're looking at Stassi. Oh, wow. Give him and, all the fastballs in the world. Yeah, no, that's where he Let should hit. Fastballs, yeah. And then you have Stassi hitting seventh. You have uh, probably some shortstop who's not going to hit my weight hitting eighth. And then Fletcher hitting ninth, Fletcher. if I had to guess. Fletcher hitting ninth. Uh, yeah, I like it. I'm not upset about that lineup at all. Uh, nah, I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy, but I'm not upset about it. And, I mean, the reason why we're not happy is because, I mean, they missed out on a couple shortstops that they were in on, for sure in on, 100% yes. in on. Um, they've been in on, and, and we can we can discuss this now that off season. I was going to say, over. I think it's time to to piss off we, some fans. Go ahead. Yeah, we can discuss this. The Angels were in on a lot of shortstops. Um, Seager, we can check. We for knew sure. that, we know that. We know he they were in on Seager. We know they offered Corey Seager yep. um, early in the season before lockout. We know they offered Carlos Correa early in the season before the lockout. Um, we don't know about Trevor Story. I'll say say that much. 
after the lockout for sure. We don't know. We, we don't know a lot. We do know that they offered Carlos Correa after the lockout and they, my belief is that they came in second place. Um, and that's only because I know that's always they, your belief. Well, that's, that's only because I know what the offer was and the offer was the exact same as the twins. Basically. I mean, like, unless, unless eight, unless, yeah, but there are no opt outs that that's, yeah. that's what you have they to didn't offer opt outs. Yeah. That's, that's the big thing. And I mean, that, that's day, why it wasn't comes, close. But at the end of the day, that comes down to not liking Scott Boris because Scott Boris gets paid more with more opt outs. Yes, Scott Boris had a weird contract with, with the Carl Schreier uh, because he changed agents halfway through the offseason. The way it worked, if I understand this correctly, Carlos Correa, if he signed a multi-year deal, Scott Boris would have to split the revenue with whoever uh, Carlos Correa's previous agent was. And then if he signed a one-year deal, Scott Boris would get all of it. So if he opts out after the first year, Scott Boris will get all of that money. Yeah. And so after, I mean, and so he's going to he's gonna opt out basically is what we're saying. And it's gonna, it'll be, I mean, and you look at it, it's between uh, Carlos Correa next year, who's probably going to be a free agent after, you know, yep. hearing this and uh, probably Bogarts maybe opts out. We would possibly assume, especially since stories there, um, not hundred percent sure that you, you never assume. No, 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 no. You, you never, you never assume. You never know. He might come back. He might like Boston, but you also never know. He might, you know, test the free agent market. And he's, is it fair to say Bogarts is a top five shortstop yeah. in baseball? Top three shortstop in baseball? Oh, I don't know about top three because you're best shortstop in baseball. No. Who's better than him? Seager I, I, went healthy. Yeah. I was going to say Seager went healthy is better than Seager him. went healthy. Honestly, I, I'm a huge Trey Turner fan. I am. I think Trey Turner is, is a top three shortstop. I don't think Xander is because Xander doesn't play enough defense shortstop wise for me to put him there. He he's a great defender. Don't get me wrong, but he's not elite. Where like Seager, he's he's a he's not as good defensively as Corey Seager, and Corey Seager gets knocked a little bit for his defensive play. Yeah. Trey Turner, I have no problem saying Trey Turner is the best shortstop in baseball. He does everything that you need out of shortstop. He picks it. He can steal. He could run a little bit. Um, actually, he can run a lot. He can play. He can play another position if you want him to. <laughs> he can play any position if you wanted him to, which is fantastic. Yeah. He can play center. He can play second. He can play short. Uh, and he's got power. You know, he hits for contact. He hits for average. He hits for power. He he is a five tool player. He is, he is a five tool player. He is, and he was, and he and he was last year for sure. I thought he he, he should have probably won the. Uh, on the MVP last year. Um, regardless I, of that, I got a good one for you: Tim Anderson or Xander Bogarts. Ah, uh, Xander Bogarts. Not really even close, in my opinion. I really, think, I think Bogarts hits much better than Tim Anderson plays defense and hits. If that makes sense, like I think okay. Bogart. I think, and I think Bogarts it's close. doesn't play as. I don't think Bogarts plays as good a defense as Tim Anderson. No, I. I don't even really think it's that close either. Like I think, I actually think Tim Anderson's a little bit overrated. Like I think he's a little bit overhyped. He's a good player. He's a good player, but I do think he's a little bit overhyped. I'll, I'll say that. Like, I'll, I think I think Bogarts is underrated. Like, if you're thinking that Tim Anderson's underrated, I think Bogarts is underrated. Bogarts makes $20 million a year. That's hard to say he's underrated. Um, I think that's, I, oh, I think that's the Mike Trout thing, too. Like, I think that he plays such good baseball that, like, we're so used to Bogarts playing good baseball, like, that, you know, it's – like, $20 million is underpaying him. He should probably be making 30 – he should probably be making more than Carlos Correa. He's – next year on the free agent market, you're paying – you're paying Bogarts 37 a year? No shot. He's no 31 shot. years he's 30 31 years old. Yeah, but if you give Carlos him a, if you give Carlos him Carlos Cray is 28. You give him a 3 for 37. I mean, I I yes, I do agree with you. I don't think that, and, and and I don't even know if you can stick Xander at shortstop for long term. Like he's probably a shortstop for two or three years and then has to move to third base. Um next year shortstop class you have Trey Turner, Dansby Swanson, Carlos Correa. Sander Bogarts possibly, and I would assume Tim Anderson's not a free agent. He has a club option at 12 and a half, which I assume will be picked up rather than bought out at $1 million. So well, you know who's the you know who's gonna be the number one guy on the Angels list there. It just too makes too much sense, right? Who's coming from Atlanta? Uh, Dan. Yeah. It makes like and he's a good defender. You know, like it just it makes sense. Like the Angels, yes, the Angels were in on shortstops this year. Um, but they're going to go get Dansby next year. Like, I, you can almost, like, that's, that just makes too much sense, in my opinion. Like, Atlanta was Atlanta, in on Correa. 
He said Atlanta was in on Korea? Yes. They, they came out today and said they were in on Korea and they have no problem saying it. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah, because they're going to lose. That's because they're going to lose Dansby next year. That's because they, they, they're going to lose Dansby next year. And the fact that they're in on Korea and didn't want to pay, pay Freeman, that's rough. That's very rough in my opinion. I, but, I think – well, no, it's not that they didn't want to pay Freddie Freeman. They offered Freddie Freeman this, like, roughly the same contract. It, it was the years. They, they didn't want to give Freddie the sixth year. They, he's 32 years old. I think they wanted to give him a four- or five-year deal. I think it was four, honestly. And he wanted the fifth-year deal. And the Braves were like, you're 32. We'll give you two. You're 36. You know, probably call it quits after that. He's gonna, and he's gonna hit though. He's gonna he, be the age. You, you would assume, um, but the the problem is the the contract that the Dodgers gave is going to be it's it could be a Bobby Bonita type trade or type signing. Hopefully, well, it's not going to go as long as Bobby Bonita's, but it, I think it he has like five five years worth of deferred money and like a fat amount of money. So we'll see how that plays out. It's the Max Scherzer deal then that's what it makes sense to me not this year's max scherzer deal scherzer with the uh with the nationals i think i think yeah. the nationals are still paying scherzer like 10 million a year or something stupid like that um but regardless back to back to angels talk we just kind of went on off on a off yeah. on a tangent and um yes dansby dansby swanson makes too much sense to be an angels the angel shortstop next year he's not going to be that expensive as 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 correa or as bogarts or as one of those guys um plays good defense can hit a little bit i mean he's a average hitter he's an average hitter oh, average he's an average but we'll look oh, at, what average. was wrc plus last year go figure I, out what his WRC. I, i'm gonna guess it was 94 and that was probably the best year he had offensively last year. And i'm gonna say it was 102 which makes a 94 to 102 that's an average hit like nine well, 94 i'd consider him like a slightly below average hitter 102 he's average i mean i think that I think this Dansby makes too much sense to be an angel next year especially with perry being his old gm and i mean it would actually that wouldn't surprise me if like Perry might have been one of the guys in on the original Dansby Swanson trade, though he might have been in. Uh, he might have been in Toronto with when that trade happened. But regardless, it's 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 interesting, and I like what Perry has done this offseason. But back onto the shortstops. Um, who's ninety-eight. Been, ninety-eight. Yep. Split the difference between us. Split the difference. He's and, a, and honestly, he's player. only been over a hundred twice in his career. He's been a sixty-three, a seventy-nine, and a ninety-one. So he's been pretty rough and then a 98 so he's been a 107 and a 115 yeah, but and he's been his a, one his 115 was 2020 which we all know does not count but he's been a he's been a above average defender that's which is all we really care about he's a one and a half war guy he's an above average he's above average defender which is all that that's all that i care about at shortstop i mean like and Jordan simmons was an average hitter but like the best defender in baseball like if you can get a good hitter and a good defender it's a plus i mean like those guys don't come around very often. It's the Carlos Correa's, it's the Corey Seager's, it's the it's half the Francisco league right Lindor's, now. It's Francisco fine. Lindor's, you know. I don't, I don't think it's half the league. I think just half the league, but it's fine. I'd take Nick Ahmed, and I'm gonna continue, continue to stick with that. So there's probably ten shortstops in Major League Baseball that hit and play defense, but I digress. Ken, you just went from half the league to 33 percent of the league. You're welcome. You said in 15, you said half the league, and you're like, yeah. So I think 10, 10 players. So I'm I'm five guys off, and and you might be able to argue that five of them can hit. Consist and and look. I mean, like now consistently though. Look at it consistently. I mean, like I could probably put Javier Baez on that list. Yes. With the money he makes, I could put Javier Baez on that list. That's what money is. So yes. Regardless, 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 I think, I mean, if you're the Angels, you have to be in on a shortstop next offseason for sure. Um, it does hurt, I think, that they didn't get a shortstop, get one of these big-name shortstops, especially since they were very much so in on a lot of shortstops um, from what we've heard. So, I don't know. You know, I think it's, I think it's difficult. Um, back onto the question, though, who's the opening day shortstop for the Angels at this point? I know we mentioned this off the record, but I'm hoping that that changes now. No, I don't. I don't stats. think it changes. I I heard Joe Madden come out and say, as of right now, Velasquez is the shortstop. He could see Fletcher play shortstop and Duffy play second, which I think makes the Angels way worse than just Andrew Velasquez playing shortstop. Um, I heard you talk about the other day, Matt Duffy should not play 140 games, oh. and he shouldn't. And if if that's the opening day shortstop, David Fletcher and Duffy up the middle, that means he's playing 140 games. 
So that is not good. That is an 80 and 82 team. I know Fangraphs has them at 82 and 80. And it's very, very hard for me to disagree with Fangraphs looking at what we have at shortstop and what our 789 could be. And even what our 6789 could be if Joe Adele doesn't hit. Um, that offense, like, it has a lot of potential. It does. But it also could be bottom seven, in, like half. Half in the, the like what half halfway in between the seven eight nine range of in the American League, offensively rank wise. Yeah, no, I mean I can see that, but like you look at it, you look at it, and this is going to kind of be a weird analogy, but the Angels are doing the exact same thing at shortstop as they're doing at, doing at pitching. In a yeah, sense, it's, it's true, and uh, they don't have Shohei Otani at shortstop. They don't have Noah Syndergaard, but like, but those are the honestly like we talk about this all the time. The biggest the most important positions are up the middle. You got to be good on the mound. You got to be good behind the dish. You got to be good at shortstop. You got to be good in center field. That's why I refuse to say they're a 500 team until something changes. Right now, they are below average behind home plate because I think Max Stassi only plays 80 games. So you're looking at, at Kurt Suzuki. Yeah, again, at best. So you're looking at Kurt Suzuki playing half the games, um, 82 at that point. And then. Mike Trout, you know, he's Mike Trout. He's going to do what he does. Um, he might hurt us a little bit defensively, but he's still Mike Trout, so we'll be fine there as long as he stays healthy. On the mound, we've got one pitcher. Eh, we really don't have one pitcher without question marks, so it's really hard to uh, – and, and when you really get into it too, like if Syndergaard is on, great. If Otani's on, great. But after that, it's – like a Michael Lorenzen on is what, a 3-5, three, 3-6 three, ERA? Yes. You know, people have Patrick Sandoval possibly winning uh, a Cy Young after the way he ended last year. Sure. Like, even even if he throws up Cy Young numbers, what if Jose Suarez is Jose Suarez from two years ago where he couldn't throw a strike? He didn't even throw strikes last year. And then you're looking at the sixth pitcher who we're going to run out there, and it's like, we could run Griffin Canning out there. We could run Reed, Reed Detmers. Detmers out there. Like, yeah, we have some options, but – it is a rough rotation, and the saving grace could be the bullpen. But even even in the bullpen, like, I mean, Archie Bradley, great sign. I love Archie Bradley. But he he has had some meltdowns in his career. He has had some meltdown months. Not like meltdown games. He has meltdown months. Uh, Loop should be fine. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not even going to get to that. Loop's been fine. You know, Iglesias is going to do – as long as they use him properly, he's going to be great in the bullpen. Um, the Tapara thing, Tapara thing. Pick so, stick Cubs to short stop. Short stop podcast. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Angels, Cubs, right? You, you know this. Everyone knows this. I enjoy watching the Cubs. I've watched Joe Matt <clears throat> manage a lot of games. <clears throat> Ryan Tapara had a career year last year. Yes, he did. He is a very average relief pitcher. He made, he made updates. He made not updates. He made. I know. I heard. He made the. I like. I. I am. I'm good with the changes that he made. I think it's legit. I. I do. Agree I'm not paying goals. a relief pitcher six and a half million dollars. She's not getting the last three outs of the game. I'm not. I can go find some bum right now on the street who's not signed. I can give him a major league contract did that at major league minimum. Year. We we did. They we were, literally did that were last year, bullpen, and they were fine. Bullpen last year. You're I'm, right. not paying, I don't, I'm not paying a guy who's not getting the last three outs of the game six and a half million dollars. I don't want Mike Myers. I, I don't want – like, no offense to Mike Myers. Like, I think Mike Myers is fine. I think Mike Myers is fine in, like, that fifth, sixth inning role, like, eight innings type of role. Like, I don't want him pitching in the seventh or eighth inning anymore. You know, like, leave that to Ryan Tapera or Aaron Loop or, or one of those guys. No, you're right. He shouldn't, but he's going he, – he would be because that's what you have to throw out there. If you get Not one of those guys, if you get a if you get a bum off of this, if you get a bum off the streets, like you're saying, that means that you're working your way into it. Like C Sheck, Steve C Sheck is not a seventh or eighth inning guy. Steve C Sheck is perfectly fine as a sixth inning guy who who is a very who who can face two, three, four in the lineup. You know, he's not the closer that he was in Miami anymore either. I mean, you're he's not a, asking him to be a closer. You're no, asking exactly. him to get outs in seventh inning, which easily he he would have been able to do. Yes, um, Tony, Wat Tony Watson. He's Tony Watson does, is not a seventh or eighth inning guy. Steve Ciszek is not a seventh or eighth inning guy. Tony Watson has been a seventh or eighth Ryan inning Tepere. guy for a long time. Ryan Tapera is a seventh or eighth inning guy. He was Ty not Bursley. a seventh inning guy until last year. 
They, the Cubs refused to use that guy in the seventh inning. He was literally the scrub guy who threw in the, the eighth inning of a game down 10. He was that guy. That was, who, that was when they used him. And it was almost like we saw him come in, and it was like, oh, boy, here we go. Game's over. Here's the white flag. That, that's literally how bad he was at, at one point with the Cubs. He, he had like a 4-8-5 ERA, and it was like, oh, boy, here we go. I mean, you could go get Chris Davinsky. Davinsky could throw in the seventh inning of games, and nobody would be upset. No. You get Brandon Kinsler, who threw in the ninth inning of games last year, eighth inning of games last year. Nobody would be upset. There, Andrew Miller is still out there. Tony Watson's still out there. Like, there are guys who could pitch in the seventh, eighth inning of games that are still out there that I'm not having to pay six and a half million dollars for. That's that's fine. That's fine. But with what Richard Rodriguez, who was a closer last year, is still out there. Right. I could pick that guy up for nothing. Cesar Valdez was a closer as well last year, and they got him yeah. on a minor league deal. Um, half, half the year. That's fine. And I, like I said, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the bullpen. I don't think the bullpen. Like I think that I think the bullpen has turned into one of the best bullpens uh, in the AL for sure, if not in baseball um, as well. Like they're, they're the upside of it for sure. The New York Yankees want to have a talk with you. Yeah, yeah, no, I no, yeah, it's fine. I said one. The New York Yankees, the, the Chicago White Sox want to have a talk with you. The Chicago White Sox also just lost Ryan Tapera. Oh no, not Ryan Tapera. He was one of the best. About, he was one of the best relievers in baseball last year. What about Kendall Graben, who they picked up? That's fine. That's his. That's their replacement. That's cool. That's fine. You know, like I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, and they just got another off, guy. We just kind of went off on a. Yeah, I know. They, I'm, they, I'm, I'm Joe upset. Kelly. Did they get Joe yeah, Kelly. Yeah. They did get Joe Kelly. Yeah. Their their bullpen's way better. Yeah, no, I, and I agree with that. They paid that. for it, though. They, they paid for it, and I I'm, I'm, wouldn't have paid for it, but their bullpen is better. We just kind of went off on a random tangent here. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to stick on shortstops. But, uh, all right, yeah, let's – um, shortstops. Can we get back to shortstops real quick? I know we, like you just said, went off on a giant tangent. Um, opening day shortstop, you said Velasquez. Yes. Um, I'm saying Tyler Wade. I think it just kind of depends on who you – what either playing the uh, – It'll be Justin Oakland. Verlander opening day. No, it's not. It's Houston. Oh, that's right. That's it's Houston. Stupid. Yeah, I know. It's Houston now. Um, you face Justin Verlander. That means you're throwing, putting a lefty in. That means uh, Walsh is at first base. Fletcher is at second base, probably. It, what's Duffy, a righty or a lefty? Righty. Duffy's a righty. That means he's coming off the bench against Verlander. Um, that means you have Tyler Wade starting. I'm not – Velasquez is not, a switch hitter. Velasquez is not starting for me. I'm sorry. I can't do it, man. I can't do I, it. I didn't say he would start for me. I'm just saying that's the best option that they're going to run out there because that, that's just what they did. That's who they went to go get. That was the guy they wanted. And I think they called it a, an offseason at shortstop after the first two weeks when they went to, to get Velasquez and, and Wade. And I know they, they tried to go get a shortstop. You know, I know they threw some money at guys. But I think it was more of like, hey, let's make them an offer. They, they're, well, we're not going to give them what they want, but we can at least say we made an offer. So that way, if the people get upset, so if people get upset when our shortstop's hitting 182 and our other shortstop's hitting 203. At least we tried. Yes. We, we gave Carlos Cray the contract. Yeah, we didn't did. give him the opt-outs because we didn't want him to leave after one year, but yeah. we gave him the contract. So that's great. And that's why we're sitting in fourth place in a division that is literally the worst division in Major League Baseball this year. Nate, you, you guys just swept Arizona Christian, number 22 team in the nation. I prefer that you have a better attitude on this show here tonight, but that's fine. Well, you came on right at me and said, how does it feel to play a little league team this weekend? So that's what the Angels are going to be this year. You know, they're, they're going to be the Arizona Christian where, where teams are going to come in. They're going to spank them. They're going to go home. And it's going to be like, well, they, they have a lot of talent. They, they just – don't win baseball games. Nate, I think the Arizona Christian coach listens to this podcast, so I apologize. I'm, I'm good friends with the Arizona Christian coach, so it's fine. Everybody, everybody's friends. Everybody's friends. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. So, uh, Nate, you got any final thoughts? Uh, spring training has been a lot of fun. Brax Martinez is crushing it. Um, Stephonics hitting well. Joey Otani starting today. That's right. Stephonics doing his thing. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So it, Interesting to hear that they're – throwing two guys who are going to be in the rotation in minor league camp. They really want to uh, control the environment that those guys pitch in, which is fair. It is, but like, this is what we were afraid of with Noah Syndergaard. How long is the bandaid going to be on him? You know, like 
the dude is two and a half years past Tommy John surgery. We, we got to let him play. Like, stop baby in the guy. He's a large human being. He throws very, very hard. He's got a his, big body can, his, his body can take it. Okay. Yep. Don't, don't be like, oh, you know, we don't, want him to, we don't want him to get hurt. If we didn't want him to get hurt, why'd we pay him $25 million? That's true. That's, That's very... my final thought. 80 and 82. <laughs> That's very true. All right. Uh, I'm saying uh, save Noah Syndergaard for the playoffs. Angels are going. Angels are going to win 87 games this year. That's right. That's eight, right. The playoffs games. for the New York Yankees. <laughs> 87 games to get in the playoffs this year. That's my number. I'm going to stick to that. Um, we'll talk about that more in the future. So, guys, just want to thank you so much for listening to this podcast here at, at Talking Halos, uh, making us the best podcast out there. I truly do believe it. Again, subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. Follow us on all of our social medias. You can just look us, on, look us up at Talking Halos. Um, you can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim. You can follow Nate at NateGreen34. And, guys, thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.